Just after 6.45, your top stories this Wednesday in our Sunrise Smart Start. A year after EMT Lakia Smith was handcuffed while trying to move a patient into a hospital, she's recounting the day the police investigator, Charles Lotempio, detained her. The confrontation here captured on camera at URMC. Smith says this unfolded after she accidentally bumped into the side of Lotempio. Tempio's car with her ambulance door. She then told him he'd have to wait to see her ID when he asked for it until after she had moved the patient into the hospital. I was just confused because like it was I didn't know what was going on. Like I was in shock. I was confused. I was livid <laughs> and it was just it was like a traumatic experience for me. Like even now when I go like near cops, I get kind of scared because of what happened. A spokesperson for RPD in the city says they can't comment for legal reasons. We have also not gotten a response yet from the union representing police officers. Lotempio is suspended with pay, has been since this happened. An arbitrator is reviewing the case and could soon recommend some punishment for the RPD chief to hand out. Happening in just a few hours, it is the sentencing coming down for our uh, the man convicted in a deadly stabbing in Webster. Piero Scala was found guilty in the death of Kathy O'Brien. Prosecutors say Scala stabbed O'Brien at her home on Oakdale Drive in October 2019. The two were considered acquaintances. Sentencing in the murder case is at 930. New charges for the man and woman arrested after deputies say they kidnapped a woman here from a hotel in Henrietta and it was caught on camera. Deputies say, as you see, the two dragged the victim out of the hotel and they tell us the victim was being trafficked for sex. A grand jury indicted Cordell Brooks and Shantiana Sims on new charges of sex trafficking and promoting prostitution that followed the initial charges of kidnapping and assault that were filed after their arrest. An RPD officer brutally attacked in the line of duty has received a special honor coming from the state Senate. Denny Wright received the State Commendation Award. State Senator Palm Helming from the Finger Lakes presented that honor to Officer Wright for his dedication to the community, exceptional valor in the face of danger, and inspirational leadership. Wright was left blind after he was attacked during a call in 2019 while responding to a home in the city. The Rochester Police Accountability Board is asking for more feedback on its new proposal for change. It's called Right to Know, an analysis of how officers identify themselves while on duty. The PAB says it wants to create greater transparency and trust between the community and the department, especially surrounding voluntary consent searches. A virtual session for public feedback to hear from you is coming up Monday night from 6 to 7.30. Then August 3rd, the United Christian Leadership Ministry will have an in-person session on this at First Church of God on Clarissa Street. A federal judge continues to block access to evidence for families of the Buffalo Tops mass shooting victims. These families filed a civil case against social media companies and gun manufacturers. What they're trying to get includes evidence from the shooter's cell phone, computers, and social media. We're hearing from a local attorney representing these families. He says this evidence is needed to help build their civil case, and he believes having it could help stop future mass shootings. There's a mass shooting almost every single week in, in America. And, and if we can hold those other people or, or entities that were responsible for what happened and radicalizing gender in and, and giving them access to the, uh, the, the, the bulletproof vest that is not marketed generally to the public, uh, the gun magazine and, and, and all of that, we can make this country safer. And that's what the people that we represent want done. Federal prosecutors are still deciding if they will pursue the death penalty against the gunman. The 20-year-old is currently serving life in prison without parole on the state case. The search for evidence in the Gilgo Beach murders on Long Island is expanding to as far off as Las Vegas. Police there say they are reviewing all unsolved cases to see if there's any connection to the suspect in New York, Rex Hewerman. The Las Vegas Review Journal reports the 59-year-old architect owns a timeshare property in the city. The suspected serial killer is charged with murdering at least three of the 11 victims found near Gilgo Beach. He has pleaded not guilty. Arrested last Friday. Sunrise traffic at 651. The expressway is around town looking good. If you're about to hop on 490, 590, 390, uh, we'll let you know if anything changes with that. Elsewhere, still good to go. 
uh, except in Macedon, that crash we just told you about on the east side moments ago. Macedon Center Road, that's Route 31F, and Hamilton Road. We'll check sunrise traffic again at 725. The American Diabetes Association's Tour de Cure Finger Lakes region is back on, and it's happening Saturday. The Tour de Cure is the ADA's largest fundraising cyclist event. The money brought in helps Americans living with diabetes. Executive Director of Upstate New York's ADA, Jeff Collins, gave us some insight on how important this event is for our area. This is really an opportunity for them to be together, to um, really show their commitment to the more than 37 million Americans living with diabetes. And they just, they love being around each other. They love supporting the mission. This begins again this weekend Saturday at the Xerox campus in Webster. The event was initially postponed earlier this year due to the smoke conditions last month. Another drug successful, successful in slowing down the progression of Alzheimer's may soon have full approval from the FDA. It's called donanemab. The medical breakthrough comes just a little more than a week after the Alzheimer's drug lecanemab was fully approved by the feds. Both target the beta amyloid in the brain, which causes plaque buildup. But the difference with this medication is that you may not have to be on this medication for the rest of your life. They actually see that the disease stopped progressing even after they were done taking the drug, which is huge. I mean, that means everything in regards to access, cost, it's just really exciting. Donanamab is expected to have approval from the FDA by the end of this year. What happened this morning? Some local scouts are headed off going to West Virginia and this year's National Jamboree. Hayden Wentworth has been out in East Rochester hanging out with them all morning long. Hayden, they just headed off moments ago. Brennan, yes, nearly 100 local scouts just left for West Virginia for the 2023 National Jamboree. Now, this is the first year that girls are allowed to participate in this trip, and scouts will be able to join in on water sports, hiking, mountain biking, and even a 3,000-foot zip line, which all are excited for. And to build on those leadership skills, they will have the opportunity to meet with prominent leaders, work on service projects, and more. We talked with an assistant scoutmaster who tells us why this is such a big opportunity for the kids. I think they um, are just really excited. It gives them a whole bunch of different opportunities. Um, they're really excited to try do some shooting sports because they've got a pistol range, shotguns, rifles, um, the big mile-long zip line they're getting ready for, the water reality. It's kind of like a, a obstacle course in the lake. I know my one son wants to do that. There's a huge skate park and um, a lot of rock climbing and boulders that they can do. So a lot of activities, but there's also um, the leadership heights and a lot of famous people that they're going to be able to learn a lot of leadership and, and build on that, which is one of the main goals of Scout. And like I said, they had just left, but uh, for about 10 days, they will be able to join in on those fun activities with scouts from all over the United States, from Alaska, Hawaii, and all over. Brennan, back to you. Hayden, thank you. Everyone talking about that zip line. We got to yeah. get some video of that. All right, so a billion reasons to buy a Powerball ticket. Tonight's big jackpot is at a billion dollars. The third largest prize still in the game's history. The cash payout for that, the winning ticket would be nearly $517 million dollars oh. before taxes by the way mega millions no one hit it last night man i think the number there is 720 it's up to and that drawing will be coming up friday amazing as always play responsibly and good luck yeah big numbers there yeah uh for you make it for a good weekend I got four bucks off a lotto ticket last week. There you go. I still said my uh, net loss for recently, last two weeks, probably down about 16. So, yeah, yeah, it's fun. Uh, yeah. Fun to do. Fun to drink. To try for those big numbers. That's yeah, always a good conversation to have. Good, a good icebreaker, too. Yes. Yes, it is. And it's, uh, would you split it with me? Share yeah. it? Can we get the, the legal document? <laughs> we'll just have to settle for now with not being rich, but we'll take a perfect day with the weather. Oh, goodness. We are winning the weather lotto for today. It is gorgeous out. Out there. Uh, the uh, air quality is great, sunshine lasting, numbers getting into the upper 70s. Tomorrow we've got storms, but I really don't think they form until late in the day.
Thursday afternoon and evening. Those should carry into Friday. And then the weekend has also actually been trending better. We've gone just an isolated shower on Saturday, and that's kind of just lingering from the storm system on Friday. So ideally, if you have those Saturday afternoon and evening plans, I know you mentioned something going on in Victor. They've got that music festival yep. out there Saturday. Food and music festival happening. Anything you want to do this weekend, get out and enjoy it. Yeah. We'll have updates on the forecast and news at 725 CBS Mornings next. Follow News 8 wherever you are on RochesterFirst.com, Facebook, Twitter, and on our app for news and weather.